and this projector. Um, these are the various levels that we've set the graded readers at that we have. Um, and the students actually start at from level one to level five depending on their level in our general English education program. Our English majors start at level three to five depending on which class they are in. And then they get promoted, as I said, uh, after they've read eight books at that level. And this also is on the BlueReader.org site. Um, this is the administrative menu that is available to uh, teachers only, and this year actually only the administrator. Uh, you can get a summary report by student, and I'll show you that. Uh, delete, view and delete attempts if a student actually had a computer freeze on him or her, uh, the teacher can go in and remove that so the student can take it again. Otherwise, they can't take the quiz a second time. Uh, you can change the student's level. If you find that eight books is not enough for them actually to go up to the next level in their in actual ability, you can lower their level again, and you can set it so the automatic promotion function doesn't work anymore. You can send a message to all the students that appears on the, their screen, uh, telling them, reminding them that they only have one more week to read, or whatever. Books are now available to, uh, in Marazen if you want to buy the books rather than borrow them from the library. Uh, quiz management, you can make your own quizzes on Moodle and then attach them to the Moodle Reader program using this one here. Or download the quizzes from the uh, Reader Quiz Database. If you install Moodle on your own university server, or one in your room, which is actually what I do at my school, um, then after you get permission, you can download all 450 quizzes, whichever ones you want, that are available now. And we have quizzes for most of the books that you'll find out there, uh, especially the lower levels. We do need people to help make quizzes, actually, because we only have 450 or so, and there are a lot more graded readers now available. And then summary report by book title um, allows you to uh, see which quizzes actually students are taking more of and what the pass rate is. And if you see a quiz with a low pass rate, we can go and like, make sure that the quizzes themselves are good, that perhaps it often is the case that there are some bad questions in it, or we've marked the wrong answer as true, and things like this. So we go and adjust it, and then I adjust the grades of the students that were affected by it, and send them a little message saying, you have now passed this quiz. And that's happened a number of times this term. Um, now I think I'll just take the remaining time and uh, implement, implementation challenges, Funding, coding, obtaining cover images from the publishers, we've resolved that problem now. Multiple editions means that there may be more covers than just one, so how do you, how do you get the student to have the, the edition they appear, appear in their uh, stamp collection? Uh, quality control of teacher-made quizzes, getting other schools to participate. Uh, syncing authentication systems means making it so they don't have to have another username, another password in order to use your system. And this year, um, the computer center at my school has cooperated and the students can log in with their school password onto my Moodle. And so that <coughs> solved the big problem there. Um, and then before I go to actually showing you, uh, you the program live, um, one thing that I've learned from this is implementation of technology for student use across an entire curriculum is possible. Um, and it sidesteps the problem of requiring or expecting individual teachers to have the know-how, the time, or the enthusiasm to implement a tech uh, component. In other words, in this year at, at Kyoto Sankyo, basically we've just said all the teachers doing this. It's in the curriculum. We had them all uh, put it in their uh, kogiyoko, what do you call that, syllabus, the printed syllabus, that, that this was going to be a required part of the course. Um, so. In order to do that, though, you have to have the authority to require it, which can be problematic if you're an individual teacher. But if you're the administrator, convince the administrator, then it's possible. An adequate server, necessary software, the human resources, ideally tech-proficient teacher to implement and support it, including system backups. This was a bit of a problem with ours. I'm not a professional, and one time I did lose quite a bit of data, which was very embarrassing. Um, a mechanism for making the student grade reports available to the individual instructors so they can incorporate the grades into their student's evaluation. 
Um, and this is all available on our system. Now, if you would like to try to use it, you can go to moodlereader.org and log in as user low or user mid. You'll get a different range of quizzes that you can take. Um, and uh, you can contact me at that address. Um, this is our Moodle system, and I'll go to the uh, second year course, which looks like this. Um, here are just pictures of the books at each level, which you saw quickly. Here's the chart, which you already saw. This is the actual link here. Um, and you choose the publisher here, um, and then they uh, choose the quiz here, and then they take the quiz. Um, I won't actually take the quiz because it takes a little bit of time even to go through the 10 items. Um, you're welcome to do that yourself afterwards. And here is the student management screen. And so you get a, a summary report for the students down here. You can uh, select your own class. This is second year. I'll choose Matthew's class. And then click on total points. And so the best student has read 13. And there's one student that's holding out. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, notorious. <laughs> it stopped coming two months ago. Oh, it stopped coming two months ago. Okay. Um, and you can also get a complete report like this of all the books per student. You can search for a student here and then you'll get just that student. Um, you can download the whole information as an Excel file. Five minutes, thank you here. And you can, let's see, what else? Full report by book title. Uh, well, let's go to summary report. You can also, in this, uh, search for a spe uh, specific book. And here, it's the pass rate. Um, this one here, Christmas Carol, you can see 79, 75, 59. Um, I've actually redone the quiz twice, so two of these actually, oh, this is Macmillan book, and these two are um, Oxford, and the 59% there are problems with, so now they're doing the one, but it still only has 75% rate. It could be that that book itself is uh, not very good. Let's take a look at it. Um, you click here, you can see each item here. Scrooge saw that something about the dead man. Nobody cared, everyone cared. Tiny Tim cried, Fred wasn't sad. Um, this actually came from the Oxford materials that are online. That is only 16%, 67% uh, pass rate. So we can go through and analyze these and then um, tweak it so that students are passing more, removing bad questions or fixing them and so forth. Um, a new thing, this term is a link called Check Blocks for Suspicious Activity. Uh, and this came up last night. This is a home IP address. Uh, ours will start 133.101, but this is somebody's private address. And as you can see, um, this student here took the quiz for him or herself and then for three other students in the second year. And so um, I can just click on this little link here that says cheated, and instead of saying passed or failed, it says in red cheated on their list when they bring it down, or when they look at it. Um, it's invariable. I, I mean, there, there's no way that we can avoid it. What we can try to do is minimize it. If they're clever enough, uh, they're going to cheat. Um, maybe we should stop now and I can field a question or two before. Matthew, what time do you start? 35. 35, oh, okay, so we do have some time for questions. Yes? Are they, are they um, reading each year? Are you doing this for each, each year of the school? Um, so for the English majors, yes, it's for two years. It's for two, uh, for yeah, two years. For so general education. 
So you have a record from their first year of what books they That's have right. So they're not and reading the same book again? Exactly. Right. In fact, in the display, we're just working on this. It'll be available tomorrow. Um, right now, it doesn't show the books from the previous year. We have students that tend to be forgetful. They don't, oh, did I hear yeah. that last year? I didn't know that. No wonder I can't see the quiz. Uh, so we were making it so it displays. Okay. Yes? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm, I'm managing it myself. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's my past time. <laughs> now, I have a grant to help fund it, yeah. Yes? <clears throat> How do you canvass the students' opinions about the program? What do they think about it? Um, that's part of Matthew's presentation next, about the human side. Mine's about the inhuman side. Uh, <laughs> yes? Yes, it goes up one, it's added on to the final grade for the course. This is one component of the course, right? The whole idea behind the extensive reading, well this you all know, is to get them to do additional reading, additional contact with English outside the classroom, right? So they're getting a course grade for what they're doing in the class. And then this just is on top of it. Yes? In content-based classes, um, well, we're doing it with our oral communication class and our reading skills class for the, uh, the general education students. And it wouldn't look like oral communication would be someplace where you should have the students doing reading. Of course, we all know that's not the case, and uh, no one's questioned it. But if it were a content course, um, you might have that sort of a problem. I'm doing it in my toy course, for example, uh, and I tell them that, you know, if they're going to raise their general toy level, this is a good way to do it. Yes, uh, that says time up, probably. Okay, one more question. We used to weigh them, I know that according to levels for different points, but now, how, how do you uh, count the fact that some of the books weigh have 12 pages, some might have 20, and... Yes, okay, so how do we weigh them for a different length? Um, generally, the ones at the same level are supposed to be the same difficulty, level of difficulty. We change the weighting by length, For if something is obviously twice as long, it gets 2.0 instead of 1 points. And the students are told that at the beginning of the term. They have a list of which books and which series are worth more or less. And so, yeah, we try to cut that out as a factor. Okay, I think time is up. I'll be around all day to answer more questions, and a lot of your questions will probably be answered by Matthew. Um, next. And Amanda. Amanda has a poster presentation upstairs. Is it on already? Is it displayed?